We're here to hear from you. It's a free form. It's sort of like when they come and they testify in Congress. It's not about Q&A. It's about what you want to tell us. And so uh, uh, I, do, I do have a, uh, an, an order that, uh, that people believe we should go in, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say that each of you get up when you're comfortable, come say what you want to say. If you think of something after you sit back down, and you need to get back up again, please feel free to. This is your day. This is about what you know that the world doesn't know. And I would ask that you, uh, uh, you, you take this opportunity to make it public. This is being simulcast, and it will be recorded. And as a result, there, it will be part of the official record of the Congress, and hopefully something that you're, you're, you're the great grandchildren will all uh, have to uh, to remember their loved ones by. So, with that, who wants to be first? Okay, thank you. I want to I want to get mine done so I can listen to everybody else's and be able to listen. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, Congressman Issa, thank you. And thank you to your team. They're wonderful. And thank you all for being here. Um, I am Kelly Barnett, Staff Sergeant Darren Taylor Hoover's mom. He goes by Taylor. Um, thank you, California, for, for having us. Um, I know you, you have your political issues, <laughs> but I love California. Um, California to me is my son. He, he served for 11 years. He was in California for 11 years. I was out here as much as I could. I, I love it here, not just because of the food, but I love it here. And I'm, I, I thank you for giving us this voice and letting us kick this off. Um, we haven't had one, and we got one, so thank you. Um, Taylor and I had uh, have this thing where we watched we watched a lot of movies. We we love to to do movie quotes. So you're going to hear a lot of those. And if and if you know the movie, then we can be friends. So, <laughs> um, and a quote. Uh, um, it was mine first, but he kind of took it over. It's uh, fear causes hesitation, and hesitation will cause your worst fears to come true. Um, and my worst fear has come true, and I have been hesitant about speaking out, and I'm not doing that anymore. So every opportunity I can, you're going to see this, this mug. Um, but it's for my son. I'm going to be brave and, and uh, tell you about my kid. Um, he's an amazing kid. Um, and I want you to know that I, I'm not a victim. Um, we're not victims. We're, we're parents to some mighty heroes. I want you to know that. Um, Taylor is my, my firstborn, my, my only son. Um, he's the first grand, grandson, first grandkid on both sides. Um, hero to our whole family. I, there's, there, I have seven siblings, and we have between us like 30 kids. So there's a lot of us, and um, he's the hero. He's the oldest. He's the hero. The light in the room, um, the protector, the one everyone always went to for advice or for a funny story or to hear a funny story. Um, uh, Taylor had this amazing ability um, to, well, when someone needed him or when someone was speaking with him, he would, the, the rest of the world would fade and he would give that person his whole attention, his whole, um, you know, everything possible to make sure that person knew that they were important and that they, they counted. I wish I had that ability. Um, I, I, I really do. What, what a cool dude. <laughs> He definitely was. Um, the Marine Corps was always his goal since he was little, six years old and up. That's that's all he talked about. Sorry, Congressman, no Army men. He only played with Marines. Um, that's fine. <laughs> that's right. He went to boot camp uh, September 13, 2010, and we had this talk. I told him, you know, you made this choice. This is going to be hard. Um, you're going to do it. You're going to do it 110%, and I don't want to hear any... I said some other words, but I don't want to hear any griping about it. I said, if they beat you down in boot camp, you just you just 
pretend like I'm looking over you telling you to get up and again some choice words um, I said I'd rather them, them beat you down there than something else happen to you somewhere else where someone else tried to beat you down um, and that was always a, a thing between us. He would always tell his friends, and it was just a, a, a thing. He said it helped him through boot camp and SOI and his, his first deployment. So um, boot camp, SOI, um, he deployed five times, three of them to Afghanistan. Um, his first deployment, he had... Uh, I don't know if it was a pleasure, but uh, he had the opportunity to be with some of the the last of the the real war horses over there. They were his, his you know, his sergeants, um, and he he became such an awesome man, an awesome machine, um, such a good person, and that's where he he learned his leadership skills and basically his life skills. Um, I am so thankful to those people and to the Marine Corps for what they did for my son. He always took care of his business. Uh, he took care of his family. He took care of his friends. He took care of his men. Um, he, uh, like all of us, he had he experienced a few years back some very traumatic things in his life. Um, tested him, and he decided that it wasn't going to beat him, and he didn't let it beat him. Um, he kind of enacted his, his motto, movement is life. To him, that meant uh, you keep going, you keep pushing, you fall down uh, 10 times, you get up 100 times, you keep going. Um, and he did. He came out wiser, um, stronger, completely focused on what life really meant and what he wanted to do in the Marine Corps. Um, he loved his family. Um, he loved his friends. He, he loved his animals, his, his two dogs, Aries and Bella. Um, and he loved his men. Um, he didn't have any women that served under him, so that's why I say he loved his men um, with a deep passion. Um, gearing up for this deployment, he... He would call me every morning uh, on his way to, to Pendleton, and he would tell me, you know, Mom, I'm frustrated. I'm worried. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting getting through to these guys. I don't know if they're going to be ready. They're, I don't know if they're going to be prepared. Um, you know, they're doing this or that. You, you know, ask me later if you want to hear some funny stories <laughs> about what they were doing. Um, there's some sad ones, but there's some really funny ones, too. Um, but he would... Uh, you know, you know, ask me, Mom, you know, what, what do I do? So we'd pray together. You know, I'd tell him to keep pushing, you know, keep going. And he did. He would pray, and he would ask his old war horses, you know, for advice, you know, put their advice into play. Um, and, uh, you know, this went on for a few weeks. And he, he called me one morning, and he was just in the best mood. And he told me, Mom, you know, they're doing so good. They got it. I'm so proud of them. He's like, you know, don't worry about me. You know, we, these guys, I got total confidence in them. We're going to be great. Um, and uh, he celebrated in their victories. He wanted them to be as good or better than him in all of his skills and all of his abilities that he taught them. And... Uh, when they excelled, that's how he, he celebrated in that. Um, um, he a tr he was a true leader. We you know I I, I know that from the, the time he was born, he always led. Um, but he led by his heart and his knowledge. He never led by his title ever. That never went to his head. He he didn't like the titles, um, but he always 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 gave his whole heart to everything that he did. Um, like I said, he was deployed five times. Um, his, his first two deployments were to Afghanistan, um, back in the muck um, when that was going on. His last one, of course, was in August of 2021. Um, I thought this was you know, going to be a piece of cake deployment compared to those where, where I prayed every day you know, uh, numerous times for his safety. I, I got complacent, and uh, that, was, that wasn't the case. Um, and, I, and I beat myself up every day for that. But I do know that he was prepared, and what happened happened for a reason. Uh, unfortunate, but I know that he was where he was for a reason. 
Um, on this deployment, he, his, his platoon, 28 of them, were chosen to for a special mission to be on a ship, um, the Lewis uh, B. Puller, which is it's funny because that's one of the, <laughs> his nicknames was Chesty because he was so motivated. Um, he had a few others, Tactical Taylor and Hoof Dog, they called him all kind of things, but he was on the ship. There was 139 people on that ship. It was a special mission. Um, it was at the, the Strait of um, Hormu Hormuz and Iran. So you know what was going on over there at the time. You can that's, It's going on still. Um, but he was on that mission from May till the end of July. Um, there's 28 Marines and, like I said, 139 people total. 28 Marines for their security and the rest were sailors and uh, people from one of the three-letter agencies it starts with a C, um, and uh, <laughs> um, end of July they left um, the ship and went back to join the rest of two one, and then he left for Afghanistan August 15th, August 16th. Um, his third time on Afghan soil. His concern but began the moment that he landed and saw what he saw. His words were chaos, no communication, lack of leadership. Um, he said he never seen anything like it. And like I said, he was in Afghanistan two times before. He told me, Mom, I, I now know that the, com the command cares nothing for us. My son, these 12 others left this earth thinking that their command cared nothing for them. The wounded feel that their command felt nothing for them. The survivors felt that their command felt nothing for them. I feel this as well. After seeing their friends die, picking them up off the ground, sending them off, then being told to destroy everything at the airport, they were told, you got to clean up the airport. We can't leave it dirty for the Taliban. They had to clean up the airport. <laughs> what kind of disrespect? What kind of hatred? For our military. What kind of mess? <sighs> Confusion, deceit. Lost, angry, sad, heartbroken, and disgusted. These are the feelings that the surface members felt and are still feeling. These are the feelings I'm feeling. Taylor's dad's feeling. His sisters, his family, his friends. We were told lies, given incomplete reports, incorrect reports, total disrespect. There were gunshots. All I wanted to know where my kid was, where he fell, how long did he last, did he fight? I was told to my face he died on impact. That's not true. The only reason that I know this is because witnesses told me the truth. I was lied to and basically told to shut up that that's the way it was. Not true. He lived for a, a little while, but not on impact. He was giving out his ammo. He tied a tourniquet around his leg. I don't understand the reasoning for that lie. It makes no sense. Other than the fact that, did they really even do an investigation? Did they talk to witnesses? I don't know. Please don't be distracted by the mess that you're seeing on TV. Aliens, who cares? Are they real? I don't know. If they are, I got some people. I got a list of people. Please take them. Um, please take them. Um, I, I can read that list to you now. Biden, the Biden administration, Blinken, Millie, Austin, Whited, Ball. Unfortunately, there's more. That's just the ones that I'm focused on at this moment. Incompetent, cowards, evil. Some are a few of those, some are all of those. 
I want justice. I want accountability. Why would they just not say, oh, we, we made a mistake, our plan was wrong, I'm so sorry. You know, that would have been, a, that would have been something. You know, I understand war is, war is hell. I understand that. But no, we didn't get that. Staff Sergeant Taylor Hoover. Staff Sergeant Ryan Christian Knauss. Sergeant Nicolo G. Sergeant Johanny Rosario Bacardo. Corporal Humberto Sanchez. Corporal Hunter Lopez. Corporal William Deegan Page. Lance Corporal David Lee Espinosa. Lance Corporal Riley J. McCollum. Lance Corporal Dylan R. Marola. Lance Corporal Kareem M. Nakui. Lance Corporal Jared M. Schmitz. Corman Maxson W. Soviak. They deserve justice. Thank you.